All right, gang, here we go. This is for Chem 2, Unit 11. We're talking about common ion effect in the video today. This stuff's not too terribly difficult. It's just kind of an application of something you've probably already thought about. Um, <clears throat> once again, ice tables, an important thing. All right, they don't go away, at least not yet. Okay, so, uh, so let's pretend we've got a solution that's got acetic acid in it, right? Acetic acid we know is in equilibrium and it forms H plus and then the acetate ion right here, right? So you got your acetic acid and we know it's a weak acid and so that because it's a weak acid, that means it's going to only partially ionize, right? So we got the equilibrium. Now sodium acetate is a strong electrolyte. That means it completely dissociates. Okay, it's completely soluble, and so we got sodium acetate, and put that in solution, it forms sodium ion and acetate. Now, let's pretend we have this solution that's this acetic acid, and we've let it sit, so it's reached equilibrium. Okay, so you got this, so you've got uh, acetic acid here, you got some H+, and you got some acetate ion. Now, if you take sodium acetate and you put this in the solution, uh, what you're going to have is you're going to make sodium ion, and you're going to make uh, acetate ion here. And so, if you, the, the, when you put this in, you can see the fact that if we add this here, it will increase the concentration of our acetate. So if we increase that concentration of our acetate, this reaction and the reverse reaction will speed up and our whole reaction will get pushed this way. Okay, and so this is like a, just an application really of Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so if we add this acetate ion in the form of uh, sodium acetate or really any other salt, this acetic acid solution will shift to the left because of Le Chatelier's principle. All right, and really this applies to anything, okay? And we call this the common ion effect, all right? And this affects acid-base equilibria, and it affects also solubility, which we'll talk about towards the end of this chapter, okay? So right now, though, we're going to focus on this acid-base equilibria a bit. All right, so let's do a practice problem here. This stuff's not too hard, really, okay? It's just a, as long as you understand. I mean, it's difficult. Don't get me wrong. But, like, it's just an application of ice tables that you've already, you, you've already mastered ice tables, all right, hopefully. And so, uh, really, this stuff won't be too bad, okay? Uh, so, we've got the solution. It says we want to find the pH. What is the pH of a solution made by adding 0.3 moles of acetic acid and 0.3 moles of sodium acetate to a one-liter solution, all right? So, we've got this. Uh, this is our balanced chemical formula, acetic acid yields H plus and acetate, and here's our Ka expression here, and let's write it out so it's something we're used to seeing here, uh, H plus times our acetate, uh oh, minus, all over our acetic acid, CH3COOH, all right, and that's all equal to our K value, that 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth. All right, we set up our ice table. Now we know the concentration is since it's one liter, the moles are equal to the molarity, which makes it nice. So the initial concentration of our acetic acid is 0.3, and the initial concentration of our acetate is 0.3, okay? And we know this reaction is gonna go to the right, you know, we have our equilibrium symbol right there. We know it's going to go to the right because there's zero H pluses to push it to the left. Okay, so it's got to go to the right. So we're going to lose some amount of acetic acid and gain some amount of H plus and acetate. All right, so then at equilibrium, these guys are equal to this. We can take these values and plug them in to our equilibrium expression. Okay, and so we get this guy here. So this is our Ka value. Okay, this was our H plus. All right, this was our acetate. A minus, and then here's our acetic acid. All right, now because this is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, and these would be 3 times 10 to the minus first, they're more than a thousand apart, so we can make the assumption that these x's will not affect our equilibrium or it will not uh, be appreciably affect our concentrations. So we can get rid of these guys here. So this 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to x times 0.3 over 0.3. 0.3 is cancel. All right, and you just get 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth is equal to x. And so that x value is our concentration of H plus at equilibrium. You can take the negative log of that, and you get this as your pH. Easy peasy, right? It's just essentially an application of ice tables. All right, weak bases work the exact same way. Okay, so if we have, so for example, here's ammonia. All right, we're reacting it with water. We've got ammonium and forming hydroxide. All right, so if we've got this ammonium here, all right, and we're adding in additional ammonium. So say you're adding in like ammonium chloride or something like that, and you're sh shoving that guy in there. Um, it's going to increase the concentration of ammonium, so it's going to shift it to the left, right? And so, and really, this reaction, remember, could be written backwards or forwards. It doesn't matter. It's just going to shift it uh, in whatever direction is opposite of what the concentration you added, right? Le Chatelier's principle. If you don't quite remember that, go back and watch that video. All right. So let's do a, a couple practice problems here. 
Okay, it says for the generic equilibrium, H A is in equilibrium with H plus and A minus, which of these statements is true? It says the equilibrium constant for this reaction changes as the pH changes. Well, that's not true. Uh, the only way to change the equilibrium constant is by changing the temperature. Um, and we just did a problem where we changed the pH, right? And it didn't change our equilibrium constant. We still used it, okay? Uh, if you add the soluble salt Ka to a solution of HA that is at equilibrium, the concentration of HA would decrease, all right? Well, we just established if we add Ka, this would turn into uh, K plus and A minus. So that would increase the concentration of our A minus, so it would shove our reaction you know, to the left here. Uh, so the concentration of HA would actually increase, not decrease. All right, and then the same setup here, adding Ka to it at an equilibrium, the concentration of A minus would decrease. Well, that's not true, uh, because we know it would shove the equilibrium to the left, but it would still go to the right, right? We still uh, have to go to the right, and so we'd actually end up making more A minus, so that's gotta be out. So D had better be correct. It says if you add the soluble salt Ka to a solution of HA that is at equilibrium, the pH would increase. Well, that's true, because we're gonna lower the concentration of H plus, because we're going to we're going to have less of it than we were before. We're shoving our equilibrium to the left, and so because we're going to the left, the concentration of a of p of H plus would have to go down, which would make our solution less acidic. So therefore, our pH would go up. All right, so it's got to be D. Okay. Now, process practice exercise two. It says calculate the pH of a solution containing 0 0.085 molar nitrous acid and 0 0.1 molar potassium nitrate. All right, so. We got nitrous acid, so first things first, we're gonna write our balanced chemical equation here. So HNO2, H plus, and NO2 minus, all right? And so that means our Ka would be equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of NO2 minus all over the concentration of HNO2, all right? So now we got our ice table, ICE, all right, so our initial concentration of HNO2 is uh, that 0 0.085. All right, the concentration of H plus is zero, and the concentration of nitrite is 0.1. All right, we're gonna go to the right, so we're gonna lose some amount of that, gain some amount of that, gain some amount of that. All right, so this becomes 0 0.085 minus X, X, and X, and 0.1, sorry, 0.1 plus X. Don't forget that, that's the whole point. All right, 0.1 plus X. Now, uh, so this will be 0 0.085 times 10 to the minus second. This is times 10 to the minus fourth. But this guy here is uh, 0.1, so this would be one times 10 to the minus first. So we can neglect these X's. All right, so this would become X squared over, uh, nope, I skipped a step. Sorry, so the X, well, I screwed up. Old habits die hard, right? From, all right, so the concentration of H plus is X, all right, and then the concentration of NO2 minus would be equal to 0.1, all right, 0.1, that's a parentheses. And then uh, this on the bottom would be 0 0.085, and this would be equal to our Ka, so that's that 4.5 times 10 to the minus fourth. All right, so that means our X value here would be equal to 0 0.085 times uh, 4.5 e to the minus fourth, and then we'll divide that by 0.1, so we get 3.825 times 10 to the minus fourth. 3.825 times 10 to the minus fourth. So that's our concentration of uh, H plus. All right, so then, uh, but it wants the pH, so to get the pH, we take the negative log of that, 3.825 times 10 to the minus fourth, Take the negative log of your answer, and we get, uh, so how many sig figs here? This has two, this has two, so our sig figs should have two, so its pH should be 3.42, uh, be our pH, all right? Not too bad, not too bad, okay? <clears throat> now let's try a different one. So this time, um, we're trying to find, calculate the concentration of the ion, of the lactate ion in a solution that's 0.1 molar acetic acid, all right, and it's in 0 0.80 molar HCl, all right, so this is lactic acid, so to save us some time here, we're just going to call that uh, LA, and because it's the acidic part here, we're going to call it HLA, all right, now HLA, equilibrium with H plus and LA minus, there's our lactate ion, all right, so here's our ice table, okay, so how much lactic acid are we starting with? Well, it's 0.1 molar, 
0.1 molar, zero of that, and lack, oops, sorry, no, that's not right. Got to pay attention, Neil. Got to pay attention. All right. So here, though, uh, we're starting with, uh, notice that our common ion isn't going to be the lactate ion like it was before. Our common ion is the H plus from this guy here. And since this is a strong acid, we know that the ion that we make is that H plus uh, is going to, all of that HCl is going to turn into this, so it would be 0 0.08, and we're starting with zero of that. Okay, and then really it just comes, it turns out to be the same thing. Subtract that, add that. Okay, so this becomes 0.1 minus x, all right, uh, 0 0.08 plus x and x, okay. Now, uh, so our Ka value, okay, um, is going to be equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of La minus over the concentration of HLA. All right, and now we just plug these guys in. Okay, so our H plus would be uh, 0 0.08 plus x, x, and then on the bottom would be uh, 0.1 minus x. Now, the tricky part here is that they don't give us the Ka, they give us the pKa. Now remember several videos ago we talked about how if they use the p value, that really means that we're taking the negative log. So the, the pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka. Okay, so uh, in order to get the Ka then, we take 10 to the negative uh, pKa just like the pH, all right? So this would be 10 to the negative uh, 3.86. All right, so we say 10 to the negative 3.86. So we get 1.38 times 10 to the minus fourth. All right, so again, we can neglect these x's, which is nice. 3.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. So that's going to be equal to uh, 0.08x over 0.1. So that means our x value is equal to, so times 0.1 divided by 0 0.08, and we get 1.73 times 10 to the minus fourth. All right? And since they just wanted the concentration of your lactate ion, that's your answer right here. So it would be that guy right there. All right? And so that's it for that stuff. Common ion effect, really not that hard. You know, it's just applications of what we're already done. You're already pros at ice tables from all of our many weeks of work with equilibrium and so on and so forth. So anyway, so do pra your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll, I'll see you on the flip side.